Oh man, it looks like everything's going through the roof. Just look at the cost of eggs and fuel. Yeah, through the roof! <laughs> We're going to cover some tips and hacks that will make your RV life a little bit easier. And hopefully, they'll be able to save you a little bit of money as well. Hey everyone, I'm Chris with Our License to Travel, and we have a lot to cover, so let's get into the video. We'll put some links below, and no, we don't have any affiliation. We're not monetized yet. Number one, never leave home without. Let's start with some basics. When leaving your rig for any length of time, turn off your water supply. And for city water, do it at the hose bib. If you're using your own tank water, you should probably turn off your water pump. It's not a bad idea to bleed the pressure off by cracking a faucet for a moment or so. Why? Well, if you spring a leak in your RV while you're gone, this one step could save you from a ton of damage. Number two, close it up. Another obvious tip is your awning. I know, we've talked about this before. Look, they generally don't hold up well in high winds. Simple. Just close them. Why take an expensive chance? Number three. Where are you at? Say, have you guys taken a closer look at these expensive GPSs we all bought? Have you noticed anything different about them? Some of us have. Like, where'd the milepost go? I seem to remember that they would show the closest milepost marker numbers that you were near on the freeways, right? You know, saving you from the really old days of paper maps and compasses, and while driving you'd have to take a mental note of which general compass heading you were on and what the number of the last milepost was that you just passed. Get the map, find out where the nearest depot is. Yeah, stuff happens, mostly when you're not paying attention or you're distracted. Now those markers aren't there. I mean, on the GPSs anymore. Back to memorizing? Well, after our double blowout last year, we found an app that takes care of that problem. It's free and can be found in the App Store and is available for Android devices as well. It's called Mile One. That's M-I-L-E and the number one. Just add it to your phone and when you click on it, it'll show you your position on a nice map and the nearest milepost marker number, the freeway slash road you're on, the county, and to the nearest decimal. This way you can easily give fire, EMS, police, service trucks, taxis, Ubers, Lyft, etc. the exact milepost that you're at. Now, some mapping services will give you GPS coordinates, but the only folks who might be able to decipher your position from that would most likely be larger emergency response systems. So the price is right, it's easy to use, it's right there with you, as long as you have your phone with you. What are you waiting for? Download it now and give it a try. It'll save you a lot of frustration. Number four, does it measure up? We almost all have a tape measure. I've got a couple of them. You know, measure twice, cut once. I leave one in Shelly's door pocket, and when either of us use it, we both know to put it back where we got it, in the door pocket. But why? Well, it's easier to get to there than with my other tools in the basement, if I can remember which basement it's in. It's small and unobtrusive, takes up little to no space, and it's easy to use. I've taken our label maker and marked on the tape the exact length that each of our slides come out. Don't forget to add a couple of inches for your fender flares. That way, when we're parking the rig, Shelly makes sure to clip it on her belt before she gets out of the truck. She guides me back into our space, and if there's any question as to an obstacle preventing us from fully extending our slides, she can put it to rest right there and then, and have me reposition the rig however she likes. It is a big time saver and a frustration eliminator. 
We've seen some folks use broom handles with marks on them, but they can be kind of unwieldy and may easily get lost in your bays. Number five, marker light hack. We've talked about this before, but not quite in this context. Here you can use this hack to test your marker lights on your RV without having to connect to your truck. By just putting a standard auto fuse, a 10 amp, in the marker lights positive and battery positive socket of the seven way trailer to tow vehicle connector cable, this will act like a jumper to power your running lights. Kind of neat having them on at night that way too. This works well with those seven pin SAE plugs. Just note that there are other plugs with other socket pin locations too. Check these out. Also, just make sure that you're connecting to the proper pins or sockets. That's power plus to running lamps plus. Generally, they're found on the top of the connector, either side of the indicator male notch. Typically, a 10 amp fuse works just fine. Number six, your breakaway brake cable. Okay, this might save you some embarrassment and grief, and you might think that this can't happen. But remember, Murphy is around every corner just waiting. So if you use a repeat link, that's this thing, to connect safety chains and or brake cables to your tow vehicle, you want to make sure that when you tighten it closed, I hand tighten it, then with a small wrench, tighten it a quarter turn more. Uh, master parachute rigger. To be absolutely sure, if you neglected to snug it, distractions, you know, everyone's doing their thing till you're hooking up to leave and then they come out of the woodwork to start a conversation. We all know better. We just can't help ourselves. Be sure to flip it so that the barrel is down to help prevent it from slipping off while bouncing down the road, which might, if not tightened properly, that might allow it to just kind of rattle open. One more hack. If you're looking to start a conversation, just open the hood on your truck. Most folks just want to help. Number seven, a cup of joe. We don't have much solar power and are using AGM batteries and not lithium. And when boondocking, power is at a premium. We have a great 7K Onan Jenny, but it's not always prudent to run it constantly if you're doing an overnighter. One of my vices is coffee every morning, one cup to kickstart the day and help with some other bodily functions as well. This means that if we try to use our Costco electric teapot to boil water, like when we're connected to full 50 amp hookups, we'd drain our batteries in a heartbeat. Our solution is our propane. And this small stovetop teapot for my pour over Chemex coffee. Save the day again. Number eight. Securing your stuff. Didn't I do a video on stuff? There are a million ways to secure things in your storage compartments and around the RV. We found a novel way to use the space on our baggage doors and that's to use these roller clamps to hold things in place. That makes them easily accessible yet out of the way. These work great for any of our travels. The only caveat is that if you slam these doors, the items may pop off, but we've never had them fail on our travel days. Number nine, rattle and bang. You know that sound your sliding bathroom pocket door makes when the magnets snap the door together with the frame? When you're closing it while you're trying to be quiet while the family sleeps? Yeah, it usually elicits Grizz's impression of Robbie the Robot. Danger, Will Robinson. Danger. Then everyone inside and out knows right where you are. Ours and a lot of other RV or solutions is felt. Some glue or the thicker Velcro brand sticky felt. Just put a piece on the strike plate and gently close the door. No more banging, and the magnets still work to hold it closed. Number 10. We use these sticky felt pads to lessen the noise the screen door makes when the door closes against it. And we take that sticky back felt on a roll 
to line the top of the main door to make it fit a little snugger. Number 11. Noodle. Have you ever had to take your microwave rotating glass plate out of the unit, wrap it with a towel and put it somewhere secure for travel days? Well, don't take it out. Here's a cheap and quick fix. Take a pool noodle, a fatter one, and cut it just a little bit longer than the distance from the plate to the top of the microwave. See where I'm going? Then on your next travel day, just jam that noodle in the microwave to hold the plate in place while you drive. Number 12. Upgrade. This goes without saying. If you want your RVing experience to be worth a hoot, then before you even start, don't torture yourself. Upgrade that factory mattress to a really comfortable one. We aren't going to make any suggestions here because this is a really personal decision and there are a lot of companies out there who cater to RVers. Just do it. Number 13. A wizard? If you want to track your travels, plan your routes, and get a free mapping GPS all in one, then really consider taking a closer look at RV Trip Wizard, which is part of RV life now. Shelly has been using it for quite a while, and it has been phenomenal. She can plan a route, generate refueling stops, overnight and extended stays, modify on the fly, and plan an entire season of travel in one app. Plus, we have all of our seasons to look back on as well as track expenses. We have an affiliate link below in our more section under the video and are working on getting some discount coupons for the program. In the meantime, click on that link and just take a look. Who knows, you might really like it. Number 14. It's a drain. Have you ever changed the oil on any vehicle you've owned? You probably muttered to yourself, there's got to be a better way. Well, there is. It's called a Fumoto a drain plug that replaces the factory bolt that is in the low point of your oil pan. At your next oil change, just replace that plug with your recently purchased Fumoto. There is a link in the description for the one for our Ford F450. Make sure you pick the right one for your motor. They make them for all kinds of vehicles, including some generators. Now, all you have to do is shove a bucket or other container large enough to Hold all the oil, ours is 12 quarts, and just flip the lever. No fuss, no mess. Here's a quick pro tip. Slide that pan under the oil filter and punch a small hole in the bottom of it to drain it before you remove it. But make sure you have all the right tools to finish the job of taking it off and have the correct replacement filter at hand. Done. These are just a few of the many tips and hacks that we've come up with and borrowed from other RVers over the years that we've been full-timing. And they have really helped make things easier for us. As always, if you've got some neat RVing hacks and tips, please leave them below so that the rest of us might be able to make our lives easier and safer. If you got something out of this video or just enjoyed it, please leave us a like. If you'd really like to help us grow, then subscribe and watch another of our videos right after this one. YouTube loves all of the above and will recommend our videos to more wonderful people like you, which will really help our community and resources grow. With any luck, we'll see you out on the road and maybe right here on OLT, our license to travel. So please, travel safe.